Um, yeah, great. Um, so before I start, maybe for those of you who don't know me, uh, my name is Vanas Kalla. I uh, run a small publishing house and online language pool that is called Scapago. Uh, we mostly make books for learning languages and our books are always based on coherent stories, meaning it starts super, super simply and it gets more and more complicated. Uh, with a story, you get grammar explanations and vocabulary and exercises and, and everything, just like in a traditional book. But there is the story, and if you want to know how the story ends, then uh, you will have to learn the language. So we published a German textbook. It's this one uh, behind me. Um, but you see this background is fake. I'm not sure. Um, if you're aware of it, of course, uh, it took me some time until uh, I realized that in Zoom it's possible to have these fake uh, backgrounds. Uh, so we published a book for German, uh, we published one for Norwegian and Swedish, and um, there will be one that is um, from, uh, for Chinese coming soon, and also Danish and Dutch next year. Um, yeah, there are people asking for the link to our website, uh, that's uh, scalpago.eu, and I'm sharing it in the chat here. Um, yes, so uh, that much to my, to my background. Um, I'm based in Europe, I come from Germany, and uh, I live here and I travel a lot in, in Europe. And as you might know, uh, German is the second most taught language in Europe, it's really popular. But wherever I go, I always hear something like, oh, I studied German three years in high school, five years in high school, I don't know how long. Um, um, but we still cannot speak. And we always studied grammar, and German grammar is horrible, as you have the, you have dative and accusative and separable verbs and all this nonsense, and it's really complicated, and we don't know how we should get to speak. And I think this is really sad, because, um, I mean, there are people who speak German who learned it, and so it must be somehow possible. Uh, but obviously, some people did something wrong if, um, through all this teaching in schools, it, uh, um, it doesn't help and it doesn't make people speak. Now, unfortunately, mostly in public schools, you have this approach to grammar that um, you have to really learn every detail of the German grammar. And only once you have studied everything and you master everything, then you can somehow start speaking. And the worst thing that can possibly happen is that uh, you make a grammar mistake. And for the schools, this is somehow understandable because I believe one of the biggest motivation for them is to um, to have exams. And grammar is amazing in exams because there is no discussion. It's either right or wrong. You can put a grade on it. It's perfect. So this is, I think, why public schools um, concentrate very much on, um, on grammar. Where else, since the 1970s, you have a different approach. Um, that today is mostly done by language apps, but also by some private language schools and uh, video courses or, or, or textbooks uh, that is somehow like, oh, let's just learn everything intuitively and uh, just listen and repeat and you will learn phrases and the grammar, just push it away, just ignore it. Um, and uh, yeah, then you don't need to worry about that. And I think both of these approaches are fundamentally flawed. The first one, obviously, because it creates this grammar trauma. So you have studied it and it's horrible and uh, you're always afraid of speaking because you're aware of uh, the fact that um, uh, you will make a mistake and you remember this German teacher who gave you nightmares and uh, you know that you shouldn't make mistakes. And of course, um, this is not very beneficial. And at the other, on the other side, I see people who have learned it in the like intuitive way. And their problem is usually that they have absolutely no clue what is going on because they see, they're very confused. They see something like uh, here it is die Schule and then mit der Schule, uh, why is it suddenly der Schule? And they just, they feel completely lost. So I think what we need to do with the grammar is um, we need to split it a little bit into the grammar that is absolutely essential and the grammar that is not essential. What I mean by absolutely essential is if you get it wrong, 
uh, people will misunderstand you. And um, this is usually not what most people think. Uh, if I asked you like spontaneously, what's your biggest problem with grammar? What's like the, the, the biggest confusion, the biggest, uh, uh, yeah. Can you just put it in the chat quickly? Uh, like for you personally, what is the biggest challenge, the biggest, um, Word order in different sentence. Yes, word order. Okay, cases, der, die, das, articles and endings. I was thinking that all of that is not really uh, relevant. Um, why? I'm going to tell you. Um, if I make a mistake where I say, for example, um, ich komme zu dich, will I misunderstand you? No. Even if I say, ich komme zu du. I would understand you. It's wrong, of course, but I, I would understand you. But if you say something like ich kommst, uh, then I'm confused because who is coming? Am I supposed to come or are you coming to me or do you want me to come or I don't know. Um, so the thing that you really absolutely need to focus on is um, the verbs. Okay, the verbs in German are not that complicated. Uh, if you have ever opened a Spanish grammar book, French grammar book, uh, it's a nightmare. Um, you have a small overview here, just for the, uh, where is it? Yeah, just for the present tense, okay? Please get these verb endings right. Learn them like a poem, learn them by heart. Uh, there is no alternative to it. Um, again, because if you got that wrong, I will be confused. I will not understand what you're saying. Make sure you get to the difference between present tense and past tense right. It is not necessary that you know all the past tenses. There, for the beginners, there are several ones in, in German. It's not so important. One of them, if you get it right, it's fine. I usually recommend the perfectum because the perfectum has this um, advantage that if you say something like ich habe or ich bin, and then you get the verb form wrong, I will still understand that you want to say something in the past. If you say like ich habe machen or something like that, which is wrong, I will still understand that you want to say something that happened yesterday or last week or whatever. Um, but uh, if you say something like ich mache, you thought actually you wanted to say ich machte, then it's a bit difficult. Okay. Uh, again, it is not so um, uh, not so important which past tense you use, but make sure that uh, you you learn one of them and you learn it right. Uh, the article endings, the dative accusative endings for the adjectives, um, the word or even the word order. It is not the most important thing. If you get it wrong, I will understand you, okay? Does that mean you shouldn't learn it? No, of course you should learn it because I'm not saying ignore the genders. I'm not saying ignore the dative endings um, because in the long run, if you study German two, three years, maybe longer, uh, you will want to, uh, you will want to get it right at some point. Once you're fluent, once you write German, you will want to make sure that you get these things right also. And you cannot say, oh, I'm going to study German two years. I will ignore the genders, but uh, I will um, suddenly then start learning the genders. So this is not going to function, obviously. Okay. Um, so therefore, uh, I made a little... PDF for you that you can download under the link that I'm going to share here. Let me see if I can do that. Da -da. Um, it is called the survival guide to basic German grammar. So in this, uh, in this PDF, um, you will learn what are these super essential things that you should really focus on. I just had a chat today in the in my uh, company Zoom room here on the Expo Lingua with someone who was B2 and was unable to do the present tense of verb conjugation, okay? So this is not supposed to happen. But uh, the, uh, the article endings, the adjective endings, unless you want to pass an exam or press an old fashioned uh, German teacher, um, it's not a big thing, okay? It's not something that will 
um, that will lead to a misunderstanding. So I still advocate for learning them. Let me get back to that for, for just one minute. Because I think that it is crucial when you're learning any language that you have a certain mastery of it, that you have a cert certain understanding. And it is actually not that difficult, on the other hand. It's not something that you can uh, learn in five minutes and, and then you won't forget it. But look at it. Um, for the, when it comes to, um, uh, to the endings that we have, the possible endings, um, that's it. It's this Rese, Nese, Marum, and If you manage to memorize this, these are all possible endings of, in, in all cases, for uh, adjectives, articles, uh, pronouns. There's nothing more. Um, I made a video on this. I'm going to share the link to my YouTube channel where you can see a video on how this uh, system functions. Um, but uh, this is something completely impractical when you're speaking. So when you're talking to someone and you said, oh, this morning I called my girlfriend, ich habe gesprochen mit, and then you're like, okay, girlfriend. So which gender is that? Which case is that? Because there's a preposition. Or is it an indirect object or direct object? Oh, I'm confused. Okay, this doesn't work, right? Obviously. Just say anything. It doesn't matter. Everybody will understand that, that it was your girlfriend or to your girlfriend, with your girlfriend. It's not... People will understand that. But when you're studying German, when you're sitting at home and drafting a sentence, um, then you can think, and then you can build these kind of systems and say, okay, now let me go to the, to the bottom of it. What preposition is it? Does the preposition require a specific case? What ending do I need? And so on, okay? Um, some people have this grammar trauma that uh, when they see a table, they are just mentally blocked. And the reason for that is usually that um, they remember the times when they had to pass an exam on this. My suggestion is what every psychotherapist, I think, would say, uh, look at the grammar table until your heart rate goes down again, telling yourself that you do not need to pass an exam on it. Um, take all the time you need and uh, be aware of the fact that uh, only this, the grammar that is essential really counts when you're speaking. And everything else is just for you to, to understand how the language functions. And at some point you will be able to, um, yeah, to master it and, and to know how to, um, how, to uh, how to operate the German language. Uh, Tomás is saying, you know, German grammar is fascinating. Yes, it is. Uh, in, in a way, it is, if, if you kind of relax about it, if, you, if you're not stressed by the next exam date, it is quite interesting. Like this concept of dativ, um, I find it always fascinating. Uh, or there are many small things in the German grammar that I find fascinating. Think of this escaped. Uh, escaped uh, Kuchen zum Abend, zum heute Nachmittag. Uh, I find it, uh, who is this S? Is it God? Is it the universe? Is it? Uh, I find this always fascinating, these philosophical questions, but they are not practical for speaking. So I advocate for separating these two worlds where you have like, okay, these are the essentials I need for speaking. This is the vast rest, which I'm going to study. And slowly, slowly, my mastery of what I know and what I can use in speaking, what I can use correctly, um, is going to merge. You need the confidence, though, that it's fine to make certain grammar mistakes, okay? You will always make mistakes. That's just a reality. Uh, you will be super fluent and you will still misgender some nouns. That's just because every noun has a gender and there is no sense in the distribution, as, as Mark Twain said. And uh, this will just happen. But is it an issue? No. What is much more an, of an issue and what I find absolutely fascinating again and again in both traditional and modern language schools is pronunciation. Pronunciation is underrated by every German teacher. I have no clue why. Well, I have a few theories, but I'm not convinced by them myself. So uh, if you have an idea why that is, so uh, feel free to get in touch with me. And <laughs> I would love to know. I, I really have no clue. Um, because pronunciation will, bad pronunciation will always uh, lead to misunderstandings. And it also leads to, well, you know, you get 
as a native speaker, you cannot even help to get slightly annoyed. That's a bit sad, but we have psychological studies about it that are quite good and uh, that show that. Um, you get slightly annoyed because you always have to concentrate. When somebody has a really bad, not like a charming small accent, that's fine, but when somebody has a really bad pronunciation, um, you have to concentrate as a native speaker to understand what's going on, what, what this person is saying. And this requires energy and it's, just, it's not very nice. Uh, so fixing your pronunciation is a very quick, a very quick win. Uh, I have a YouTube channel where I uh, put a lot of uh, pronunciation videos where I teach you all these uh, details, like how to say U, how to say H, how to say U, and all these things. More videos are coming soon. I wanted to um, make one about the vocalized R, which is a huge issue for most speakers um, or most learners. Um, that is much more important if you want to get on with your speaking. That is much more important than the grammar. Yeah, except the what I call red grammar in this little guide that I shared for download um, that you should really learn that where, where there's no excuses. Um, okay, so second thing, and of course the third thing, you will not learn to speak without speaking. I think, I mean, that's pretty obvious. Now, there is a bit of a debate on how that is supposed to, how that is supposed to, to work. There is some people that say you have to speak from day one, right? Uh, the first thing you do, uh, speak German. I think Danny Lou is, uh, um, supports this concept very much. Then you have others like Asimil, um, they are also on the Expolingua. Uh, they have these courses where they say, no, the first 50 lessons you're just supposed to, to understand. Uh, like a kid that is learning a mother tongue, just understand and then you will, will get to speaking. There is really no, there's a sweet spot of course between speaking before you even know what you're saying and uh, uh, studying 10 years and never saying a sentence, somewhere in between. Um, but of course it feels scary to speak German when you're not, when your confidence level is not so high. Mm. And what I, um, what I suggest in these cases is this, uh, I call it onion principle because it looks a bit like an onion uh, or it's, I can, I can uh, explain it with an onion. So if you're scared of speaking in public uh, to German native speakers, maybe you dare to talk to a teacher, right? Online teacher can be, so we have online teachers. Um, if you're interested, uh, we give one-on-one -on -one lessons on Skype, but also other language schools do that and they do it very well. Um, yeah, that's maybe an option. If you find that also too scary, maybe a German speaking friend, maybe you have a friend from Austria or from Germany or Switzerland who is willing to talk to you and maybe you're not scared of speaking to that friend because you know that your friend is not going to laugh and uh, make fun of you or you just feel safer. I mean, very often, I think that's an emotional thing. We know that the native speakers are not going to, they're not going to laugh at us. They're not going to, but still it feels scary. So I'm not somebody who says like, oh, just do it and get out of your comfort zone. And uh, no, it's not that easy. If it was that easy, everybody would be a psychotherapist and, 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 and say, uh, uh, to a depressive patient, well, don't be so sad. It's not so. It's not so easy. We we all know that. Um, so step out of your comfort zone, but just a little bit. Um, talk to if you don't dare the friend. Talk to other students. It's much less scary um, to talk to other people who are roughly on your level um, than to speak to native speakers. And we do regular virtual language cafes where we use uh, Zoom, just the same tool as we're using here, uh, where you can meet students at your level. Um, if you download this, uh, this guide, you subscribe actually to our newsletter, you can unsubscribe anytime and I will not send your email address to some Viagra dealer, of course. Um, but if you're on the newsletter list, you will get an invitation to it. We're probably going to do one next week again. Um, we have people from all over the world usually, and uh, we can also, if we have many people, then we split into breakout rooms where uh, we have the beginners in one room and the bit more advanced and the very advanced and so on, so that you can be sure to meet people um, at your level. That's free. Anybody can join 
Um, and yeah, and lastly, if even that feels too scary for you, don't underrate um, speaking to yourself. That's fine. Um, you will learn something if you speak loud to yourself at home. Um, that is a way of, of practicing your German as well. Um, and a very solid one. Because, for example, you can make something like a script. You can um, um, talk about your job. You can say, like, what is your job? Five sentences, what it means. And you can say that to your teddy bear five times. And once that works well, you will have a higher confidence at um, um, yeah, speaking to, uh, to other people. And then you can move on this onion, you can move like from the inside one layer. Don't, don't jump. Like if you feel scared of speaking to anyone, then don't jump from like myself to public. Just go from myself, for example, to another student. What feels a little bit scary, not too scary. Okay. Uh, great. Yeah. So this is more or less what I have to say in these 30 minutes. Now, of course, the time here is quite limited. Um, just for you to know, there is a, as I said, I have my uh, private room, here, private, well, this, I have a, a, a room here on the Expolingua uh, platform on, on Zoom, where we can also talk. Um, I'm sharing a link here that's just to the Expolingua exhibitors list. Scroll down on this list until you see this picture, the one that's behind me, uh, with uh, you know, the that's a German textbook, by the way. Um, I will be there in 10 minutes, I guess. We still have till half past six, and then afterwards I will walk back there. I'll be there till eight o'clock German time uh, tonight, so still an hour and a half, and tomorrow from 12 to seven, I think. No, is it 12 to seven? Yeah, 12 to seven. So you can just come in. Um, when you're on the exhibitor's profile, you click on the blue button that says talk to me now or something like that and that will lead you into the zoom room maybe you have to wait a few minutes until i can let you in from the waiting room but um, that's how it works so just to sum up um feel free to download this um survival guide about the german grammar i'm sharing this link once again um feel free to have a look at my youtube channel for pronunciation sh um, sharing this link also here and um, yes, of course, if you're interested in the book, you can see something on the website I'm sharing here. I mean, I have it also here. Unfortunately, I cannot show it to you, but uh, you see that the one behind me is fake and uh, this one is real. So we tried, of course, to make it, um, make German grammar a little bit fun and easy to understand. Um, but um, we also go very deep because, as I said, I believe um, that is um, an important uh, an important part of your German learning journey. Um, Peter is asking, "What was this link for?" Uh, Peter, if you click on it, then it gets you to the. Uh, overview of the um, all exhibitors at the Expo Lingua. If you want to go to my private room um, afterwards and talk to me, um, you can send it, um, you can uh, scroll down to my profile, learn languages with fascinating stories, it says, and open the profile and click on talk to me, and then you can join me in my private room tonight until eight o'clock and tomorrow from 12 to seven. Uh, Billy is asking, is there a survival kit in other languages? Yes, we have it for Norwegian and Swedish. Um, anybody, by the way, who would like to... I um, don't know if I have my... Uh, no, I don't have it here. I'm going to share the link to my website once again. There is a contact opportunity. Um, just uh, click it and... Uh, you will find a contact opportunity. So you can ask me also there. Um, okay, are there any other questions? We still have three minutes. Um, no, we don't have 
Spanish, yet. Yeah. Catalina, okay, it's nice to hear. It's happy about the Norwegian. So we have these textbooks also. I, I need to sell you something here, right? I mean, it's <laughs> so the grammar guide is free, uh, <laughs> download it for free. Um, the um, YouTube channel, of course, with all the pronunciation videos is free. Subscribe to it because I'm making more, I'm sitting at home with uh, Corona lockdown. So I'm going to make more uh, pronunciation videos the next weeks. Um, the book, well, it's a book, it, it, it will cost something, but I think it's not uh, very, um, expensive. The book is with explanations in English. Yes, it's for A1 and A2. Uh, we're making the uh, succession now for B1, B2, and this will be 100% in German. Uh, the book is called Jens und Jakob. Uh, you can see it here behind me. You can find it on Amazon and there is a hundred countries worldwide where it's delivered. Uh, you can also download a free uh, uh, free preview here. Uh, you have to subscribe to the newsletter also, which I recommend because then you get invitations to the language cafes. But as I said before, um, you can um, you can also um, uh, unsubscribe anytime. On the Amazon, no. Um, ask your local bookstore in Germany. It's uh, so in US, it's not a problem at all to get it in the bookstore. I think in Germany, it depends on the bookstore, but usually they can also order it. Um, Yes, C1, Mariana, will come. We're, we're doing something for B1, B2 now. C1, to be honest, my opinion is, I know the German teachers here throw rotten tomatoes at me now. Uh, I think you, you shouldn't use a textbook. When, you're, when you have passed B2, please read original literature. There's so much out there. It's, German literature is, is so rich, and, and why would you waste uh, your time on a stupid textbook? Oh, sorry, but <laughs> I think A1, A2, B1, B2, that's for textbooks. Beyond that, please read original literature. Erich uh, Kästner, start with children's books. Uh, uh, yes, we have one minute. So if somebody has a question still here for the chat, uh, feel free. Um, for those of you who came late or the um, uh, those who are still lost the links, I'm still going to share once more. This is for the uh, grammar guide, and this is for the textbook, if you want to have a look. Uh, this is my YouTube channel, and if you want to come over and talk to me in person, then please click this link and scroll down to my profile. It looks like this picture behind me, the one that is, that is fake, actually. Click on the profile. Click on the blue button and you can talk to me live. I come from uh, Foot Invite, that is a small place in Bavaria at the border to the Czech Republic, Katarina. Uh, okay, uh, so it's 6.30, so I guess we have to wrap it up because there's another talk coming here. Thank you so much for participating, it's been fun. And maybe I'll see some of you in my, in my private room. Okay, thank you, bye-bye. <clears throat>